Hello again, I'm Dr. Nunez with Living Health. Today I wanted to touch on the subject of nutrition. There were a couple of new interesting studies that were published in the Journal of the American Heart Association that I wanted to touch on and review with you. This is a series of videos that I'm doing on how lifestyle impacts health and sense of well-being. Lifestyle is an area that's, be, that's becoming a specialty now in medicine called lifestyle medicine and it impacts the way uh, chronic disease can be managed, can be prevented, and uh, longevity can be improved. In this light, I have some videos uh, that speak about the different pillars of lifestyle medicine. One of the pillars is nutrition and what we like to talk about as a plant predominant whole food diet. And uh, the subject today is going to be going over two studies that came out recently in the Journal of the American Heart Association. I'm going to read, uh, I'm going to cite them below so you can click on them and you'll be able to find them and read them for yourselves. And uh, I'm going to look over it and I'm going to read you some of the conclusions of these studies. Okay. The uh, first one is the plant-centered diet and risk of incident of cardiovascular disease during young to middle adulthood. And in that study, they took a group of about 5,000, almost 5,000 young adults, and they studied them from the mid-1980s all the way to about 2018. And they looked at the incidence of heart disease based on what their diet has been over these years. And those that are eating more of a plant-based, plant-predominant diet, and they did a questionnaire on how they scored uh, the dietary regime that we're on, did have a considerably lower incidence of cardiovascular disease. So that's another positive for the plant-based uh, program in terms of cardiovascular disease. The other big study that was done is uh, the relationship between a plant-based dietary portfolio and risk of cardiovascular disease findings from the Women's Health Initiative Prospective Cohort Study. That is a mouthful. And these were postmenopausal women, so uh, women in middle age and on that were studied. And they looked at their diets and yes, those that were more plant-based, that were more plant predominant, uh, showed a lower risk of cardiovascular disease. That's what the portfolio diet is. Uh, it's a regime that uh, emphasizes plants and uh, vegetables and reduces intake of uh, animal products and meats. So sometimes people ask, well, I enjoy eating meat. I enjoy uh, some people are even as, as far along as on a carnivore diet nowadays. There are a lot of uh, fads out there, but uh, the evidence is pointing increasingly in the direction of uh, eating more plants and less animal products are better for your health long term. And these studies were just about cardiovascular disease, which is a significant uh, uh, problem in, in the United States and in developed countries. But it also shows benefits in, in other areas as well, including diabetes and things of this nature. So no, you don't have to go vegan or be completely vegetarian. But what it does show is if you emphasize plants and your diet, you get a lot of health benefits. Now, what are the, what's the importance of, of the plants? One of the big things also that we notice in the Western diet and the developed country diet is people not eating enough fiber in their program. And you don't get fiber by eating meat. You get fiber from plants, fruits, vegetables, beans, legumes, lentils, those kinds of things. Some people ask me, well, if I eat more of those things, I tend to get gassy. Well, that's actually, uh, and you should consult your doctor and your provider of healthcare for about all these things. Usually when you're starting, when you're shifting your diet and you're eating more fiber in your diet, initially the body has to get accustomed to that. 
and sometimes at the beginning there could be a little bit more gas. That tends to go away as the body readjusts. And part of what's happening is that you're managing your microbiome. Those are the bacteria that live in your gut by the nutrition that you eat. So as you shift your diet more towards that plant-based world, your microbiome will change and it'll become more accustomed to digest plant-based material and you will start to have less uh, less gas. What else can we say about the plant-based diet versus the meats? It's cholesterol. Plants don't produce cholesterol. Cholesterol is produced by animal cells. So as you emphasize your, your plants and de-emphasize meat, you will naturally be eating lower in cholesterol. So that's another huge advantage. Cholesterol is what ends up getting deposited in the arteries that produces then uh, blockages or impairment of circulation. It can be in the heart, in the brain, in the kidneys, in your legs as you get older. So these are the parameters that I wanted to speak of in this, in this area of, uh, of lifestyle medicine today and nutrition. Plant-based, whole food, predominant diet. Now that whole food component, what is that about? Well, we don't want you to process food as much because typically what happens as food becomes processed is that you start to get rid of some of that fiber. It's of particular importance with the grains. So when you're eating grains like uh, rice or wheat or those kinds of things, it's the best to go with the whole grain, go with a brown rice, a wild rice, go with whole wheat, go with multigrain. Why? Because you're going to preserve some of the fiber in there. If you process it and get rid of some of the fiber, you're going to have a refined grain, which is mostly going to be, in a lot of these cases, a white starch, which the body converts very quickly to sugar. And so that's not favorable. Sugar is another point. Sugar is, is refined from uh, sugar cane, mainly in, in our part of the world here in the United States that's a refined product that is something to avoid even though it may it, it does come from plants um, so avoid the refined sugar where else can you find sugar fruit juices so that's why we say it's better to eat the fruit than squeeze it and drink the juice when you're squeezing the fruit you're many times filtering out a lot of the fiber that a fruit has and you're concentrating the sugar that the fruit has in its juice so that's something to look at as well in terms of what can you do within the plant-based world. What are the higher fiber things in the plant-based world? Well, the cruciform vegetables, some of the leafy vegetables, uh, the beans, um, the lentils, the legumes and the like. What areas that you might need to be a little bit more cautious with also if you're going plant-based? Well, with the nuts. Uh, the nuts are are high in protein but they're also high in good fats and oils but fats do have a lot of calories so you have to be a little bit judicious in, in nut consumption and the like also when speaking about the refined grains and the flours you do have to be careful with pastas you, you do vegans and vegetarians that eat a lot of refined uh, flour products like pasta can run into trouble with caloric intake and the like. So you have to then figure out how to burn that off. So how does this fit into lifestyle then? It's the nutritional side, right? How do you keep going in that? Well, many times people tell me, well, I, I eat for comfort and I eat these bad things because I'm stressed. Stress is another area of lifestyle medicine that you have to look at as well when you're looking at uh, your ability to maintain a lifestyle that's going to be healthy for you and that you can enjoy. And I have other videos on that. And within the control of weight, plant-based whole food predominant can be of great help because as you eat more fiber also, it's more filling, you'll be less inclined to eat other things. And within that lifestyle, you have sleep as well. I know I'm introducing other factors here. Sleep can help you manage the stress, which can help you avoid stress eating, and sleep can help you manage weight. 
So if you're sleeping regularly in the evenings or whatever your cycle you're on in terms of, of work and wake, that you go to bed at the same time and rise at the same time and you're giving your body the opportunity to sleep seven to nine hours in the evening can also help you make better choices nutritionally when you're awake and can help you manage uh, a weight if, if that's an issue in your life. So again, this is a, a introduction to lifestyle medicine. These are things that you can do, that you have control over, that can improve your health, and your sense of well-being. You can do it. There's a lot of evidence, I have other videos on it, that 80% uh, of chronic disease can be prevented, managed, or improved with the lifestyle changes. So if you like these kinds of videos, press the thumbs up, press the subscribe button, press the little bell so you're notified of them. And again, thanks for watching, and until next time, I'm Dr. Nunez. Bye-bye.